Hi, this is Dr. Anna. This is our second segment of the mass movement in physical geology. Uh, and I am at the types of mass movement. The first one, you know, we group them, the slow and the fast. I'm going to start with the slow. The, the first type of slow mass movement is the creep. Creep is the, it's a funky name, I told her. I know you're laughing. Creep is the slowest mass movement. It measured in millimeters or centimeters per every year. And this will occur even at, on very, very gentle slope, basically one degree, which means it's basically flat. And the creep happens because the soil particles in the summer, when it's really hot, they actually expand and shrink, expand and shrink. And that makes the, uh, the material on the slope to move a little bit, just a teeny tiny bit. But if you think about it, you have the gas pipes, the water pipes under the ground outside of the house a lot of the time. So when this creep happens from year to year, you know, it can put pressure on the pipes and they can break, causing a lot of possible problems. So that's the creep. And as I said, the primary cause of the creep is the thermal expansion of the underlying material. Now, how do you see the creep in nature? If you have layered rocks, which is upside down layers, so the layering has to turn upside down and it has to be toward the slope. And as, as the slope actually creeping, the layers start to get bended. That's one sign of the creep. The other side is when you have bended trees. This is important to see because you can take pictures for your picture project. So the bending trees are very important, bending trees. Don't forget that even when the creep is happening, the tree bends a little, but then it always grows back toward the sunshine. If you have retaining walls, they will fail from the creep also. So these are the signs of the creep, and I hope you will be able to take pictures of these. You can also see fences, original straight fences, to be like crazily uh, cricket because of the creep. And that's just another one of the bending layers because of the creep. And that's the pistol butt trees, you know, when the tree bends, that's also a sign of creep or some kind of mass movement. The next one is the solifluxion. The solifluxion is uh, a special variation of creep which strictly happens in polar region. Uh, the solifluxion will happen on permafrost, which means soil which is all the time frozen except the very, very, very top couple of inches. When in the summer it actually melts, it moves just a little bit on top down. Okay, so that's the so-called solifluxion. And it's important to know that it only occurs in polar region, solifluxion. And there is a picture. You can see that this top layer is moving down on the other ones. There's another good picture right here. You can see the movement happens that way. And now we are at the rapid ra mass movement. When you have rapid ra mass movement, that could be really rapid, as rapid as kilometer per hour or even meter per second. Uh, we further classify them based on the type of movement starting with the rock fall, the fall. The fall is when basically something dislodges from the rocks. This is the light rock. The top part dislodges and falls down. So that's the rock fall. It can be very, very dangerous, as we know. Like, look at this picture. Like, they, they had this t tunnel here, but then at the same time, the rock just happened to fall down a bit further. So this poor guy must have died, I guess. And this hit is an amazing rock fall in, in, in Zion National Park. The next one is the rock slide. When you have a rock slide, that means that the rocks are moving along a flat plane we call slip plane. Slip plane. So that's the slip plane. And it's always flat. Usually it happens when you have rocks with weakness, weakness planes toward the slope. Like if you go on 81 north, toward Lexington, and you see those Greek ladders on the side of the mountain, that's a typical area where you can easily see a rock slide. So the most important thing is that the rocks are moving along the slip plane, the flip plane, sorry, and the flip plane is flat. 
and there is another amazing looking rock slide here too. You can see the flip plane is pretty flat. The most common one, especially in our area, is the slump. When you have a slump, usually it happens in unconsolidated sediments, such as soil around us. The most important thing that the slumping happens along a concave up curved surface, and there will be two things you'll have to recognize the slump based on which. One is the scarp. The scarp is the area where the movement have started. See, you have scarps like all over. And the other thing is where the material rest is the toe, right here. So that's the toe. Um, usually the slumps will not go far away. They just go like not too far away and they will stand right there at the bottom of the slope. And that's when you look at like the side, you will be able to see the scarp always. And you will be able to see the toe area where the material which was moved are, are relaxing, standing right there. So that's the toe. So here we have like a picture right here. And uh, I hope you, if I ask you, would you build a house there? I probably until today you didn't think about it. But now I hope you will see that there is the scarp all around there. And this here is the toe, you know, rather here. This is where the material is resting. Same here. You can see this beautiful scarp and this is the toe. So you can clearly see the beautiful and this is the, the concave surface along which it moved. And this is even though an older movement you can clearly see it still. So if you want to build a house here I would just say no. No, nowhere. Not here. Nowhere. I would not build a house on this slope. Especially since you see this this previous mass movement there the next one is the flow this is the fastest type and this is the one which moves the farther most away and it happens as highly viscous fluid and it could be dry or wet the dry is not as dangerous as the wet they also sometimes can uh, contain big rocks and that is the most dangerous kind actually so here is the earth flow, which is the dry one. And as you can see, it started up here and it only moved down here. So it doesn't move that far away and it doesn't move that fast. So actually you can outrun the earth flow. And when you have a mud flow, which is wet and it's really fine grained sediment. So it's like a muddy water basically. And there is nothing you can do. It moves really fast and it moves even on slope very, very gentle, one to two degree. And it's very characteristic in arid regions because then they have, in arid regions, they got torrential rain, so it can happen easily. And then the worst kind is the debris flow. The debris flow is when you have the mud and the water plus big rocks to it. So that's the most dangerous because it can actually take houses and every i mean all of them can but this is the worst because it also has these big rocks this is very common in the blue ridge because we have the forest fires in the summer and then when the hurricane season comes in like september october november that's when the debris flow will happen there is a a good drawing of the debris flow And this one here is, is a very famous lahar. It happened in uh, Armero in Colombia where the Nevado El Daru is erupted. And a couple of hours later, you know, the volcano is up here. And there is a valley which actually connects the volcano with Armero. And the lahar came down at 2 a.m. when it reached Armero and people died in their sleep, basically. It killed 23,000 people with no warning. And that shows you here is Nevada de Ruin. And there is Armero right here. So it's about 30 kilometer. It's not that far away, really. So how can we predict mass movement? One of the most important is that when you look for your house, you have to go around with open eyes. And you want to look for evidence of previous mass movement. Uh, you got to see the geology of the slope. Is it sensitive? Is it soil? Or that, do you have hard rocks? Do they have weakness planes? Main and most important thing, try to avoid building on sensitive slope. Remember that is clay.
which basically is everywhere. So sometimes it's impossible to avoid it, but you can do the best there is. You can find maps actually showing the extremely hazardous area. It's important to know that sometimes the insurance will not pay for damages because they say it's act of God. So before you purchase any property, you have to go and check it out. Not only look at the house itself, but you also have to look at the neighborhood because most of the time the composition of the slope is the same as in the neighbors. Uh, if you like the view, don't fall in love with it. Don't fall. I think don't fall. I'm not sure. Don't fall, don't fall in love with it. Uh, look beyond it. You cannot just see the view because to see a view, you have to be on a pretty steep, steep slope. So make sure that you understand the risks of being on a steep slope. You want to investigate the, the whole neighborhood, as I just told you, and make sure that you don't have cracks in the basement or anything like that because you do not want to call the insurance company and being told that it was act of God and you have to repair everything by yourself, which is going to happen with this also Washington because insurance companies just will not play, pay for mudslide. Uh, there are a couple of situations where there is nobody paying. People have lost like million dollars homes and nobody is helping them. So it's very important that you learn to look before you buy it. What can you do for uh, stabilize, stab, uh, to, to stabilize the slope? You can build barriers. Uh, you can build retaining walls. But I have told you that if you have a whole mountain behind the retaining wall, it wants to be straight. Don't worry about that. Ooh, look at me. So if you build a retaining wall, it looks pretty bad. You have to have these pipes behind the retaining walls. So the pipes actually can collect the water out. Instead of, you know, if the water collects behind the wall and it's heavy and it freezes and it rains, it just brings down the whole wall with no problem. But if there is pipes, that constantly brings the water out of the slope so it won't get too heavy. Um, it is very important that you prevent flooding, you prevent undercutting, which means you won't cut very steep slopes. And you don't... Um, You, you don't want to oversteep in any slope. That is very, very dangerous. These are just a couple of methods of stabilization. So they can put like um, nails in, they can put uh, different um, pipes and stuff, which makes it more stable. And these are other stable, stabilizing methods. And just like here, it shows you that if you build a retaining wall and you don't have pipes collecting the water, it's a big trouble. If there is a possibility, you want to actually cut your slope depending on what is the weakness plane in the rocks. So your role basically is to learn more about your local geology and understand the potential geologic hazards in your area. And before you buy any property or start building, just consult with an engineer or a geoscientist to try to figure out if, if it is safe to build that or not safe. And you have to avoid activities which result in major undercutting. Um, buildings which will be on the top of the very sensitive slopes uh, and do not place fill on a steep slope because the fill is going to just go down. And the most important thing is that if you don't understand what's going on, just request information as and assistance from, from your district planner or some local geologist of the area. You can go and take pictures of all the stuff you just learned and also you can take pictures of good practices such as this right here when they really build a sophisticated wall to prevent mass movement, like in different ways, of course. This is the cheapest one. When you have a sensitive slope, you can put like these gravel filled channels, which prevents the slope, you know, it collects the water out of at least the, the, uh, the runoff cannot make much damage because it collects the water in these low channels.
there's a whole lot of uh, mass movement and had to be prevented because a lot of area has to face uh, these problems. So it's very, very important that you guys at least get prepared to understand if you are at high risk of mass movement or not. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I'll see you. Bye.